my name is Roshan Karmali. I'm an artist, a storyteller, and a poet. I love to listen to stories, and I hope that my words and poems create a story for you for the time that we're together. And uh, just a huge thank you to The Dirty Word for having me, and I hope this is dirty enough for you. Part one, mother. I believed them instantly when they offered me the theory that the child picks the parent. The Catholic reverend did not agree. He aptly pointed out that God had written my story out and knew who begot me, who begot them, who I would beget, and who they then would go on and beget and be begotten by and so on and so forth and so behind in the time of Adam and Eve. Seem to Anambi, I correct. Hmm. He smiles, agree to disagree, we always respond. And so we are made, distributed and written before this existence. In a big scroll, there lies the words of our free will, pre-prescribed and waiting for us to be born, not in control of the outcome. And so it's no surprise that I prefer the idea that everyone was divinely given, that at some point in the ether, in the primordial world, somewhere before or after, or in between the time being created, there may have been a moment when we all decided to fragment and re-meet. And the fact that I know this to be a possibility means that that time could be this time. I revel in it from the moment it is spoken. Relief. I relinquish all responsibility for the end product. Instead, laying in boarding school beds, I formulated some pleas, made my call out to the unknown candidates and rebuked every other theory. I told them everything they needed to know if we were to live in this lifetime together. I told them my flaws to ensure that they would know exactly what they were getting into here. I wanted them to be sure because there was little chance I could change the me I had become, and I knew that they would meet me with this complexity age. I made commitments, prayed with a heaviness that pinned my frame to the bed, whispered feverishly that we would fit like lock and key and flow like water. I made promises. I'm being reminded to keep them. I wondered where you would take me to meet you gave myself indications to know it would be real. And here we are, more like water and all the locks are open. So we just play with the keys. You're alone in this world. No one told you, struggled through womb doors, only they didn't revolve and you didn't evolve quickly enough to dive back in and breathe underwater. The ocean emptied in a second and you were turned out. What is mother? This moniker that is so haphazardly announced at birth. Not yours, theirs a sort of string or noose that slips over the neck of a woman already tired from labor, but mainly from the repetitive patriarchy that's been bringing her down her whole life. Time after time, either giving her labels she doesn't want or making her defend the whys and the reasons behind the ones she does, or just ignoring her, making her invisible to the point of pain or so visible she screams, internally every time you look at her. Mother, thanks for another label of expectation, abbreviation, mum, I'm sick of being abbreviated, got a job I never applied for or I'm a whore. We take this name, this word, we force her into things she still can't fit into her own skin. Now we put her in faux fur mother, she's dying inside suffocating on her own design, step up or step out, but it's not really multiple choice, it's not either or, you can't choose what they already prescribed you to be for, for he, for she, for they, but in the end they don't stay, just lock the doors behind themselves on the way out, womb emptied, now pregnant with expectation but longing to feel hollow. 
you cut one cord and its spirit loops across your chest, a spiritual asthma attack. Then your abdomen screeches with pain. Whether you want them or not, it's still the same. Today, you became a mother. Sit in the pain, never to be the same, never to reclaim your name. Why do doctors, teachers get titled from MDs to PhD who? What about me? What's my title or power to be? To the mothers who taught us to put water in our mouths to prove our morals, to lay ourselves bare before men to fulfill our wanton wombs, but speak not of our wanton stomachs. To stand steadfast with men whose only consistency is the determination to rule blood and bones with vanity and ego. You're drowning your daughters in your sins you put assumptions on her abdomen like a truck full of bricks on her chest. She's not going to be her best, even if she wanted to. Pity and appall is all you spew. It doesn't matter how kind the words seem to you. Fake it till you make it, but drowning, because making it wasn't something anyone ever planned on you doing. Part two. Woman. I'm left at the door of the police office and asked to wait there. I find him midway through a once full rack of ribs at a rickety table, not a stain on his crisp white uniform. He sits like a bloated toad eating at a thimble. The chair beneath him, the real victim in my opinion, creaks, weeps and cries. Do they beat you? He inquires through mouthfuls of dripping fat. No. Are these your children? Yes. Where is your husband? Fingers dig deep into self-made hand whack. My stomach turns and I might vomit. Mouth stuffed, lips licked, grunts. He looks me up and down, slowly, for ages, whilst he eats chews and picks his teeth. That's not a concern, I answer, an attempt to breathe evenly, thankful when she walks back into the room with my forms. He makes a big gesture of getting up, scraping the chair against the floor. We are not animals, he jests suddenly and breaks his gaze, bellowing laughter, vibrating through layers upon layers of hot belly fat. Confused, I notice his wedding ring pinches his short, stubby finger. He places the space remainder of his plate in front of a small girl who until now has been hidden behind his no doubt stinky armpit. I wince, realizing she's been sandwiched back there this entire time. It's hot, but she looks pretty in a silky red dress. Her face beams gratitude. He picks up a cold, bottled water and washes his hands in front of the door, washes his face. I think he finds himself impressive. Before he leaves, he looks over my children and then stands directly in front of me. I stand so that I'm not facing his belt. He leans forward. Good luck, he huffs. His belly swipes my breasts as he leaves and I go home and bathe them in tears, salt and candlelight. Leaving your heart in your throat, leaving your home, leaving your friends, leaving your comfort, leaving your dignity, leaving your responsibility, leaving your sympathy, leaving your fear, leaving all things, always leaving, always feeling left. You have to leave the feeling alone and be alone to feel, always being alone when you're left. Leaving because you don't know, leaving because you know, Leaving because you can't stay, staying so that they won't leave, leaving so that they will, being left, always being left behind, never being left alone, never being able to leave, always leaving something behind, forgetting where you left. Part three, Woo. Bliss is laying under shading trees, Blossoms like ripened labia, birds and bees suckling greedy. 
flirt with your knees facing the sky, swaying thigh to clap thigh, taste nectar from swollen lips, sticky breeze, clench, breathing. I propose the woman as a body of worship, make menstruation into faithful ritual, worship bruised lips with warm millet milk baths and anoint limb with silk seed oil. Let body become pathetic fallacy, allow the skies to contract and tighten the soils, let plant and pore become ripe, tender and delicious, keep pulsing riper and riper, sweeter and sweeter. Rise tides of thick molten menstruation, oozing and spilling like sumptuous fountain. Eat of the flesh and let every taste dissolve. Allow all the nutrients to sweat out and sink in. She is not a sin, but a fountain of youth. Bring her to the edge. She is death giving life. She is capable of life giving death, resurrection and rebirth. New life and old souls live within her walls. Part four, God. I pray my heart away into her moon. A vision Constantly, irrevocable, tongue-tied prayer brings climax to the hungry wolf. Bring me to the first bear, asking what I found there, unburdened and untied. What does the sun become when heaven is at mother's feet? Features of bodies all facing one direction, palms up to the rising, drinking heaven. <laughs> 